Hello and welcome to lecture 7 in equilibrium chemistry. Today we're going to look at the acid ba and base ionization constants, referred to as Ka and Kb values. Of course, these are the knowledge outcomes prescribed by Alberta Learning. They form the basis for the bulk of the diploma exam questions that you'll see. Hopefully you've been referring back to this page from time to time to get a sense of how well your mastery of the material is coming. Um, as in all equilibrium systems, an acidic or a basic system can be defined by an equilibrium constant expression. For acidic systems, the Kc is designated Ka, and for basic systems, we refer to it as a Kb. Um, however, little else changes in the analysis of these systems, except we also apply what we know about pH and pOH, and I'm referring you to that system of equations we dealt with in grade 11, in grade 11 as well as the, uh, the Kw. Uh, equation. For aqueous hydrogen chloride, the Ka expression can be determined from the equation just like this. So we have the chemical equation here, and of course, Ka equals the molar concentration of the products over the molar concentration of the reactants. In this case, the water is excluded because it's in liquid phase. Mathematically, if you look at your table of relative strengths of acids and bases, you see that the value of the Ka is reported as very large. What that means is that this concentration of HCl all but disappears, all but goes to zero, because it's such a very strong acid. And if you recall, very strong acids are in fact strong because they're very effective at donating their protons into solution. On the other hand, for acetic acid, which is a weaker acid, the Ka expression is derived from the chemical equation like this. So again, here's the Bronsted-Lowry chemical equation, and the Ka expression is determined by molar concentration of products over molar concentration of reactants. And again, water is left out of the Ka because it's in liquid phase. Now, for acetic acid, it's a weak acid, so this concentration of acetic acid doesn't go to zero. Previously, we've seen that as little as 1.3% of acetic acid, in fact, ionizes. So you're going to have a very much smaller Ka value for acetic acid, and you can find it by referring to your, your table of relative strengths of acids and bases. And again, yes, uh, I'm just making mention that these tables, these values are tabulated in your data booklet. Um, I'm going to uh, introduce you to a number of questions uh, in this area. The first is type of question, and they're categorized into types of questions. And uh, there's, uh, frankly, a broad spectrum of questions you can see in this area, which is why tabulating them into types of questions becomes valuable. So I'll give you an example of four different types, but there's no remedy uh, to, uh, in terms of understanding this material better than the homework that uh, your teacher assigns. So that would be my referral to you at the end of the lecture. So the first type of question we're going to look at is determining Ka from the concentration of hydronium. And here's an example. The student measures the pH of a 0.25 moles per liter solution of carbonic acid to be 3.48. And calculate the Ka for the carbonic acid from this evidence. And here's the equation. Carbonic acid reacts with water to produce hydronium and the hydrogen carbonate ion. Um, the Ka expression, of course, equals concentration of the products divided by concentration of the reactants. You'll notice the coefficients of everything here are 1. So the exponents here in every case is one. Um, we need an ice table to determine concentration of hydronium. I'm sorry, we're given the pH uh, of the system, so we can use that to determine the concentration of hydronium using uh, that hydronium concentration equals 10 to the negative pH equals 10 to the negative 3.48. In the end, we get hydronium ion concentration equal to this value. Now we complete an ice table. And you're, you're given uh, the initial concentration of the carbonic acid. Therefore, you assume the initial concentration of the other species are zero. The carbonic acid disappears to some unknown amount, so negative x, while the concentration of the two products appear at the same rate. And positive x, positive x. And it's the same rate because the stoichiometry is 1 to 1 to 1. So at equilibrium, the carbonic acid concentration is 0.25 minus x, while the concentration of hydronium and the hydrogen carbonate ion are both x. 
We've already solved for the concentration of hydronium ions, so we can plug this value into x in every case and solve for the Ka. So there's the value for x. We plug that into the Ka expression just like this. We end up getting a Ka value rounded to sig digs of 4.4 times 10 to the negative 7. Um, the next question uh, is a different type again. Uh, this is determining the concentration of hydronium from the Ka expression. Predict the concentration of hydronium in the pH of a 0 0.200 moles per liter solution of methanoic acid. So here's our Bronsted-Lowry system. The methanoic acid, which is a weak acid, donates a proton to the water to produce hydronium and the methanoate ion. And the Ka value is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4. And I uh, got this value from uh, the table of uh, relative strengths of acids and bases in your data booklet. Set up an ice table, and we're given the initial concentration of the methano uh, methanoic acid. Therefore, we assume that the concentration of the other species are both zero. The change, well, the methanoic acid is going to drop in concentration by some unknown amount. Uh, the concentration of the hydronium ion and the methanoate ion are both going to increase by that same unknown amount because the stoichiometry is 1 to 1 to 1. At equilibrium, then, the methanoic acid is going to have a concentration of 0 0.200 minus x. The concentration of hydronium is going to be x, and the concentration of the methanoate ion is going to be x. Our Ka expression is the molar concentration of the products over the molar concentration of the reactants, ignoring the water because it's in liquid phase. Then we substitute in our values. 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4 equals x squared over 0 0.200 minus x. Um, this is a small Kc. So I can use the small Kc exception here, and I can rewrite that equation by dro dropping x in the denominator, just like this. And I cross multiply, take the square root, and I get a value for x of 6.0 times 10 to the minus 3. Of course, x is the concentration of hydronium, which is what we're looking for in this question. So that equals our concentration of hydronium. Finally, solving for pH. pH is the negative log of the concentration of hydronium. We substitute in that value. And we get a sig digs uh, happy uh, version of the pH of 2.22, keeping in mind that the 2 in front of the decimal is not significant. Um, in terms of bronsted lowry bases, there's one more equation we have to derive. Um, very similar considerations go into determining these Kb values and working with them mathematically. Um, there's a couple of things I'd like to add, though. Strong bases dissociate completely. And typically, these include the classic Arrhenius bases, which are ionic hydroxides, including sodium hydroxide and barium hydroxide. And here's an example where sodium hydroxide, greater than 99.9% .9 of the system, exists in its ionic form in solution. And the Kb expression, of course, is concentration of products over concentration of reactants. And this concentration will all but go to zero. So you get a Kb value here, uh, likely of uh, quote unquote very large. The final concentration of hydroxide ion uh, mathematically then can be equated with the initial concentration of the base because the Kb will be quote unquote very large. There's an interesting relationship between Ka for a conjugate acid and the Kb for a conjugate base. And keep in mind that a conjugate acid and a conjugate base differ by a single proton. So let's derive that relationship. It's actually a mathematical relationship. If we consider aqueous ammonia then, let's look at the Kb value for aqueous ammonia. So here's ammonia reacting with water, and uh, the water acts as the bronsted acid. It donates a proton to the ammonia to produce the ammonium ion and hydroxide. And the Kb for that then looks like this. It's the molar concentration of the products over the molar concentration of the reactants. Water is ignored because it's a liquid. Then we react the conjugate acid in water and look, it's, it's, it's Ka. So the conjugate acid for the ammonia is the ammonium ion. And in water, it reacts like this. 
It donates a proton to the water, acting as a bronstellari acid, to produce ammonia and the hydronium ion. And its Ka value for this conjugate acid looks like this. Molar concentration of products over molar concentration of reactants. And again, we're ignoring the water, which is in liquid phase. If we multiply these Kb and Ka values together, it looks like this. Kb times Ka equals the Kb for the ammonia multiplied by the Ka for the ammonium ion. And you'll notice that we can cancel out the ammonium top and bottom. And we can cancel out the ammonia bottom and top, just like this. And we end up getting a very interesting derivation. Kb times Ka equals hydroxide concentration times hydronium concentration. And where have we seen this before? Well, that equals Kw. So therefore, we can now derive a final equation, Kb times Ka equals Kw. And this is just another alternative process we can use to come up with a, a solution in many of these examples. And I'll demonstrate, I think, in this next question how there's more than one way to sort of skin the cat. And I'm making that comment here. So here's an example where we're using the Kw equals Ka times Kb to determine the solution. Solid sodium benzoate forms a basic solution. Determine the Kb for the weak base present. Well, we're not given an equation here, so we're forced to determine the Bronsted-Lowry reaction. So we list all species present. Sodium benzoate is a compound, so we assume the sodium ion is present and the benzoate ion is present. And, of course, water is present because it's a it's an aqueous solution. We identify all the bases, water and the benzoate ion, and the acids, which is simply the water. Then we identify the strongest base and the strongest acid. And we write a Bronsted-Lowry equation where the strongest acid donates a proton to the strongest base. In this case, water donates a proton to the benzoate ion to produce our benzoic acid and hydroxide. The Ka for this system is 6.3 times 10 to the minus 5. And that's the Ka for the uh, uh, benzoic acid. Kw equals Ka times Kb. So we rearrange, rearrange and Kb equals Kw times Ka. Substitute in and we get a Kb for the benzoate ion of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 10. We could do a check. We can multiply the Ka for the benzoic acid times the Kb for the benzoate ion, and we should get 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. One final question type, um, where we derive Kb from the concentration of hydroxide. And here's the question. A student measures the pH of a 0 0.250 mole per liter solution of aqueous ammonia, finds it to be 11.32. Calculate the Kb for the ammonia from this evidence. And here's the reaction. So ammonia in water reacts. The water acts as the bronsted lowry acid. It donates a proton to the ammonia to form the ammonium ion and hydroxide. The pH of the system is given at 11.32. And again, there's several methods we can follow. I'm going to use the concentration of hydronium equals 10 to the negative pH. But I'm told that using pH plus pOH equals 14 is faster. If I substitute in then, concentration of hydronium equals 10 to the negative 11.32. And we get this value for the concentration of hydronium. Of course, hydronium times hydroxide equals Kw. Hydroxide, therefore, equals Kw divided by concentration of hydronium. I substitute in, and here's my concentration of hydroxide. And I'm not going to round that because that's not the final answer in the question. The question wants me to solve for Kb for ammonia. But I'm, I'm going to need that because that tells me the concentration of hydroxide at equilibrium. So here's the question restated, and here's the Kb value. It's the molar concentration of the products divided by the molar concentration of the reactants. And of course, water is ignored because it's in liquid phase. And here's our ice table. Um, 
The initial concentration of the ammonia is given at 0 0.250 and it drops by some unknown amount. So at equilibrium its concentration is 0 0.250 minus x. The ammonium ion starts at zero. It increases by the same amount that the ammonia decreases. So at equilibrium its concentration is x as is the concentration of hydroxide. Um, we derive our Kb expression and we substitute in these equilibrium values. Kb equals x squared over 0 0.250 minus x. Now, I know ammonia to be a weak base. I know that because um, um, we've worked with it now for some period of time. Um, so I'm going to use the uh, small Kb value. My guess is that weak, it's, it's weak enough base that its Kb is going to be less than 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3. And of course, with a small Kc uh, shortcut, we're able to drop the x in the denominator, as I've done here. And of course, we, we previously solved for x on the previous page. It equals the concentration of hydroxide, which is this value. And I'd refer you back to the previous page. So we're going to substitute that into our Kb value. And we're going to solve for Kb at 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. Interestingly, if you don't use the small kc shortcut, you get 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. So here's one of those cases where the small kc uh, shortcut um, influences your final solution. However, uh, uh, without question, you get credit for either answer on the diploma. That concludes my lecture. I hope you found it of some value. And of course, um, because of the number of types of questions you'll see in this area, um, there's no sort of maximum amount I would recommend. Do whatever questions you get your hand on until you master the material. Thank you. And we'll see you next time when we talk about pH and buffer systems. Take care.